Well, I started out as a commercial photographer. I started quite young. I was about, I guess I would have been in my late 20s, early 30s, I think. And um, I had been working uh, for photographers in Sydney. And I had been working for the Australian Centre for Photography Workshop before it um, moved up onto Oxford Street. So it's old times. Um, and through that work... Um, I met a lot of the art photographers in Sydney, which was a real education for me because I had been previously only aware of the commercial photographers and that side of thing and how what it was like to be uh, working as a photographer. Um, I went working as a photographer after I'd done my um, Australian Centre for Photography uh, workshop job with Anthony Braille when they first started the workshop in Paddington. And um, so I went out into the uh, world of, of making your living as a, as a photographer, which I was just young enough to, to not be uh, daunted by it, but I was very rare on that at that time as a female photographer. So thankfully that's changed enormously in the last um, however many years it's been since then. And now that there are many, many women out there working as photographers and I have the pleasure of, of uh, sometimes working with those those women and um, helping through what I do now, which is called Art There, which is a mentoring and production company for photographers to have exhibitions in Sydney. And I gained my experience for that by working at Stills Gallery for 15 years. Um, after working for 15 years as a photographer, um, I developed um, symptoms of what was finally worked out was celiac being celiac and I was you know losing a lot of weight and I was working really hard and once I was diagnosed celiac it was all fine but um, at that point in time I thought maybe I should stop stop working so hard but that's impossible so I moved across to Stills Gallery in its second year of existence and was assistant director and then I was co-director there and then after that I was curator and when I changed to being curator at Stills Gallery, I then uh, dreamt up the idea for art there, which is I could see from my role at Stills Gallery, there was an enormous need in Sydney for um, educating people about how to enter the art world, that there was really a lack of knowledge. If someone was a brilliant photographer, it didn't mean they could automatically become an artist. And so I became um, really interested in that that terrain of like, okay, what does it mean to be an artist? Um, does one have to decide to be an artist in order to be an exhibiting photographer? And there is a, a big grain of truth in that. You do, in a sense, have to decide whether you are primarily an artist or whether you are a working photographer who's very skilled in creating images. And then that skill can be applied to so many different directions, depending where you want to go, but I observe a lot of photographers having a struggle to move across from being a working photographer and to exhibiting, and I think a lot of the reason for that is a lack of understanding of how the art world works. Yes, yes, um, although, you know, like, I'll just tell you when I first started at Stills Gallery, if we had responded purely to people who approached the gallery and asked to show work, they would have been primarily male and also um, they also uh, would have uh, probably found it harder to get into the scene. But that, I think, has changed a lot. And what I became aware of even before I worked for Stills was that there seemed to be more women working in the art area, people like Ansa Helka, who had started, you know, I knew was a little bit younger than me, but she um, had always felt comfortable in the art world, whereas women did not feel as comfortable as uh, working being a working photographer, it seemed to be more of a masculine energy or profession at that time. No exact reason why, but that was that was the way it was. And if I think of the older generation of photographers, the great majority of them would be male and then there would be a sprinkling of women. And when Carol Jerems passed away, we lost one of the great practitioners and we also lost Melanie McGay before then. And I thought that was terrible for art photography, that two of the greatest women photographers should not be part of that scene anymore. And, um, yeah, sorry, can you repeat your question again? Sexes. Both sexes, but as in my inside head, I've always been totally feminist and I would really would encourage women 
more probably in some ways uh, but I would say probably I haven't actually counted that's a very interesting question whether it was equal but people I mean in the times when there was a lot of people coming toward me for mentoring it would probably be a mixture but I um, I counted up how many women that I've worked with throughout there and it's the great majority of those artists are women I think it's something like out of 40 people that I've worked with, 30 of those have been women. Mm -hmm. And also with Stills Gallery, I know when we started Stills, we had, we proactively sought out women artists. And then we were at just the same time as proactively seeking out artists as opposed to just responding to people who came to ask to show because that didn't always yield the best results. And that just said something more about... Um, how people understand galleries, I suppose. And I feel like that's a whole education area in itself to sort of teach people um, if you are wanting to be an exhibiting artist and you think you want to be at a, um, a mainstream gallery, then do you have the right credentials? Do you have the right background? Do you have the right knowledge to actually work out how to approach a gallery um, with um, an understanding of where galleries are coming from and what they're looking for in terms of representing someone or showing work? Well, I think it's I, – I can't really tell the, any immediate impact from the Me Too movement at the moment. It's still very early days. I just think it's great that it's happening because it's about raising consciousness across the board, about, you know, understanding and, um, you know, the, the, mor the morality around, you know, being women in the workplace and everything. However, um, I think that uh, in terms of female gaze, I mean, I think that – a gallery is looking for an artist who will is both excellent at their craft or their art, but is also likely um, to be able to build their reputation and to be able to sell. Those are some of the key values that a gallery is looking for. Um, and to Stills' credit, we didn't always choose artists who are likely to sell. We went by the work itself. The work itself is what speaks. Um, so there has to be totally professional values, there has to be a clear vision, there has to be terrific craft, and there has to be ideas behind the work. Um, and then it has to be able to relate in some way to a buying public. However, if you only went on that value, you would end up with much less work on the walls. So, I mean, often it's a few few artists in each gallery that is that are holding up the rest. Um not in a negative way, but, you know, who, the, there's a, there are artists that sell really well and it's either through their reputation. Um, when it comes to gender, um, I've heard from the statistics that the higher up you get in the art world, the more likely you are to be male in terms of selling, and I would believe that's probably still the case. However, there are always exceptions to that rule as well. My interest is mainly, you know, what's happening with photography, women, photography artists, and photography in general in art galleries, how it's being represented, where it's being seen and heard, you know, um, what's happening with the fact that um, photography galleries are closing alongside some of other, you know, other galleries, general galleries are closing because of the economic situation, which is a real tough scene at the moment. Um, but I always, as a woman, as a curator, I am always very proactively looking at women's work all the time and would reach out a hand to help a woman always. Um, and that's purely because I am aware that it's been an inequitable situation that needs to be addressed. And also I believe, because I look at film as well as a lot, and I think cinema is even worse off in terms of female representation in it. And I think the art world is better off in terms of female representation than, say, the commercial side of things. Um, and that, uh, but you know, if, yeah, it, you just have to be very well um, aware and educated to move into that as a woman. And that's one of the things that I set out to try and support artists. I didn't set out to support women artists only. However, I would always have an eye out both for the content of their work and for um, helping them get their work seen and heard. Well, it's across the board, really. But I mean, I'm very interested in contemporary work that says something about the present. Um, that's just my thing. That's what I'm always looking for in cinema as well as I am in photography. And uh, photography's got the ability to be very immediate and be really from, from the present. So um, I like... I've always been a champion of documentary work, even though that is and can be a lot harder to sell. However... 
I find that that all kinds of work for, can sell as long as you have a really good support group around you. You've got to have people who are likely to support you in your work, whether that's family, friends, um, associates, whatever. But then on that, you build up your reputation and that is what then takes you further. Um, and then you have repeated exhibitions. Um, like that. There's no rule there. It's just to sort of... It's about how you spend your time. It's like if we're going to be an artist, then that is what you prioritise. That becomes your work. Um, historically, I guess, a lot of the um, art photographers that I know have supported themselves by teaching within the art institutions, um, but there's only so many positions there, and others have uh, day jobs, and they work on their photography outside of that. Um, I find that the hardest thing is if people are, are working professional photographers, and I know this from having done it, that it demands so much of your time. It demands um, your presence day and night to get your work processed that it's very hard to switch over from that. Um, and yet, um, commercial photographers have a much better grasp technically often than people who've been to art school and had a lesser rigorous on-the-job training. So there's good and bad things about both. And I mean, I know some brilliant photographers don't have to come through art schools. I think it can help if you're seriously wanting to be an artist and you know that early on. However, often you don't know it when you start. You just know you're attracted to using camera and you start doing it and you, you start teaching yourself on the job. But one thing that's really, really important is to have a good context around yourself, to have other like-minded others who you can communicate with, compare what they're doing, talk about issues, be part of a group or a collective or someone, you know, and there are women collectives now, which is fantastic, um, and have an opportunity to show and tell your work because photography and art leads very much to being a sole, sole trader, a solitary person, and I think that often um, people are attracted to photography because you can do it on your own. And I think in some ways I would have liked to have been a filmmaker, but I thought photography seemed like it was more able to be manageable as a sole trader. Um, however, I think that you must have a support group around you and be prepared to work with others. Otherwise, you won't get very far. I think it's really important to test your work out on someone else and what I found when I set myself up as a mentor and I never thought that's what I would do but now I know why I did psychology at university <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I find that um, if someone is prepared to pay a fee which is not a very large fee but a fee to come and talk and show their work then they really usually have something worth showing because and they know that so that's a test of like if they're prepared to pay to come and talk then they've got something that they are very very uh, sure that they want to do something with and then um to have someone observe what you're doing it's it's having a second brain on the project and there are so many steps towards having an exhibition that um that's something that i can explain to people and that's what i learned by working at stills gallery thank you stills and um that um, the, the steps are people often get fixated on or what should I, what price should I put on my work? Should I addition my work or not? What sort of addition should I have? Well, those are all details that change all the time and they're very simple once you have um, someone else's brain that knows something about that on it. And also to help shape and edit the work. Some people are really good at editing work. Others are, are find that quite difficult. And how important the space is that you're um, going to show the work in, that you can't really make final decisions about numbers of images or ways of presentation until you have a space. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's, there are steps that um, I can guide people through. And I think that what's happening is that photography is being more accepted into the mainstream mainstream art world and doesn't it's the question of whether it should be a separate space or not and it really depends what that space is interested in black eye for example has done a great job for five years by supporting a lot of commercial photographers that needed to exhibit work and that's been really interesting watching how it was possible to have as many as they had every year exhibitions maybe two weeks each that's a lot of exhibitions people coming um, whose work was ready to be shown and looked great at the scale that they would show work and I spoke to Tom from um, Black Eye and he said that I asked him about the gender breakdown and he said what was his statistics it was something like 
um, they had he, over the five years, 47 males and 17 females exhibited there, but he said that less female female photographers came to show him work, but of the ones that did, um, the women's work was much stronger and he wished that there had been more submissions. Mm. I think what's happening now, I'll just talk about what, yep. there are. I think the wonderful thing that's happening now is that there, there are young women coming through, they've either come from art schools or they've come from some other area, um, but they are starting out on their careers much younger and they're more confident, which I'm really thrilled to see to go out into the world. You don't have to be confident to be a great artist, but it helps when it when you're going into the marketplace. Um, and they may be going to spend time in New York or wherever to sort of see what's happening over there, which is great education. Or And they're able to get a space in galleries. There are still um, galleries in Sydney who will be very interested in um, younger people's work and one of the ones that I can think of is Arterial Gallery in Balmain which actually selects work from um, students that have come out of graduated out of colleges in Sydney so that's a really good endeavour to support people that have come through and have a body of work that's ready to go uh, and then um, they have the opportunity of becoming part of that stable of artists. So I believe that there are younger women coming through who have uh, an awareness of uh, the art world and a confidence to move into it more than um, at an earlier stage than possibly previously. That from working outside of a gallery and then going into one, I was always very uh, sympathetic with people coming towards um, me as a curator to try and get their work shown. And in terms of that, I was always willing to tell them other places to go as well. And that's kind of where the idea for art there came from, um, which was where can you show work that is appropriate your work. Where is your work appropriate to show? So one of the first things I would advise people is to look at a gallery's um, list of artists, go online and really check out the kind of work that they're showing. Um, there are plenty of spaces. There are artist-run spaces. And as you said, um, there are spaces in, in, in Canberra, for example, the space that you um, exhibit yourself, which is that gallery. Photo again. access. Um, photo, sorry? Photo access. Photo access gallery. There are galleries that um, are not driven totally by uh, the financial requirements and thank God for them because artist run spaces, places like art space or um, government uh, funded spaces allow people um, to practice their art form. There's another wonderful gallery in Sydney called Articula, which is very articulate, which is in Leichhardt, which is actually um, set up to help people develop their processes um, and their methodologies through exhibiting at that space. So it's not, there are not all galleries, you need to understand the difference between the different kinds of galleries, are set up purely with the idea of um, we want someone who's going to become a Tracy Moffat or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Because, and also you will find most galleries and often you have to look spaces that maybe you haven't thought of looking and get advice from people who are inside the art world more um, about what the policies are of different galleries. Sometimes it's just it's a phone call to the gallery to say, what are your requirements for submitting work? What kind of work do you um, are you interested in showing? And... And, and asking other artists, hanging out at gallery openings, talking to people. It's a research job like anything, really.